Hey everyone, my name is Christian Brooks. I am the owner of Brooks Bookkeeping and Accounting Services, where I aim to empower and educate women of color entrepreneurs and small business owners on their business finances and taxes. I have a special video for you all today. This video is going to show you how to do easy bookkeeping using Google Sheets. Now I know that there are some entrepreneurs out there and small business owners who can't afford a bookkeeper or you're not at the point where you want to bring in a bookkeeper or pay for a QuickBooks or Zero subscription. So I created this Google spreadsheet for you to organize your business finances in a quick and easy way available on my Etsy page. The link is in the description box below. You have four tabs, the chart of accounts tab, the transaction log, the profit and loss statement, and then the annual overview. So we'll start with the chart of accounts. So every business has a chart of accounts. Your chart of accounts is just the Rolodex or the index of accounts that you use in your, your business. Your chart of accounts would consist of accounts that will appear on your profit and loss statement, your balance sheet, as well as your equity statement. However, for the purpose of simplicity and this spreadsheet, we're only going to focus on accounts that appear on the profit and loss statement. So there are accounts that are pre-filled for you. You can change them if you want to. You can add or uh, take away. You can add up to 40 expense accounts. You can also add in some more revenue accounts. So I added some here. When you're adding accounts to your chart of accounts, you want to make sure that you're adding categories and not transactions. So what I mean when I say that is you might be paying for Google ads to advertise your business. You wouldn't put Google ads as an account though. You would put advertising because advertising is the broader category and we could put multiple things related to advertising under that category. So we can put Google ads. If you decide that you want to run Facebook ads, we can put that under the advertising category as well. So again, you don't want to put single transactions. You want to put broad categories. That way we can fit different things in that category. Now the accounts that you see here, these are important because we're going to use them throughout the rest of the spreadsheet. The Accounts here will automatically populate on the transaction log. So when you go to put in your transactions, you just push this uh, down arrow and you'll see all of the accounts that we, that we added. So let's try to add a new account. Let's say we are adding equipment, right? We're adding equipment over here. Then we're also going to add freelance, okay? So when we go to the transaction log, push this drop down button. Let's see. We see equipment right here. And then we go back up. Bam, here's freelance. So everything you put on your chart of accounts is automatically going to populate on the transaction log, but it's also going to automatically populate on the profit and loss statement. So we see freelance here. And then we see equipment here. Okay, now let's go over to the transaction log. Now the transaction log is where we're going to go in order to add different transactions. So you want to add your daily transactions. So every time you spend money with your business or every time you bring in money with your business, you will put it here on the transaction log. There are uh, a couple different columns here. So you'll see date, details, amount, type, account and transaction ID. So uh, your date is going to be the date that the transaction happened. Details, any details that you wanna remember about the transaction or, to, or that you think are important. Amount, the amount of money that you spent, including tax, or the amount of money that you received. Type would be whether it is a revenue account or whether it is an expense account. 
the account would be the specific account that is associated with the transaction and then your transaction ID. So your transaction ID is a unique number that is going to identify each transaction so that you can find it quicker. You don't have to add a transaction ID, but I recommend that you do because if you're looking for a transaction, it's easier to identify that transaction using the transaction ID. Okay, so let's add in a, a couple transactions. Let's say on January 1st of 2022, I made a, a rent payment for my office space. So let's put office space here. Okay, and then how much was it? Let's say it was $2,000. Okay, it was $2,000. This is an expense and we're going to put that under rent or lease. The transaction ID, 001, right? Simple, right? Let's add another one. So let's say on January 5th, I had a um, payment on a consulting contract. that pay me $5,000. This is revenue. And we'll put that under consulting. Transaction ID, let's do 002. Let's make it easy and just go in order, okay? So we have two transactions here. Now let's see what, what happened. So when we go to our profit and loss statement, it automatically put in our transaction. So here we have the consulting, our consulting contract for $5,000. And then we have our rent payment for $2,000. We go down. So it's automatically calculated our income before taxes, which will be $3,000. And it has also calculated an income tax expense. So it's extremely important to remember your income tax expense because as a entrepreneur, you have to pay your regular tax rate in addition to self-employment tax. Self-employment tax is 15.3%. 15.3% is the Medicare and Social Security tax or the FICA tax that you would normally have to pay when you have a W-2 job. However, when you have a W-2 job, you are only paying 7.65% and your employer is paying 7.65%. But since you are the employee and the employer because you're self-employed, you're paying the whole 15.3%. So I tell my clients to always sit aside at least 20% of all of the money that you bring in to cover taxes. So this spreadsheet is automatically going to take 20% of your income before taxes and put it as an income tax expense. And then you have your net income, which would be $2,400. Now, I also recommend setting aside money for your reserves. Reserves are gonna be important for a couple different reasons. One, if ever you have a couple months where you're not bringing in any money, if you have money in the reserves, then you still have money that you can use to operate the business. So this is the reason why a lot of businesses kind of went under during COVID. They might have been doing well before COVID, but they didn't have any cash reserves. And because they didn't have any cash reserve, when the entire economy shut down and there was no money coming into the business, they didn't have money to pay their bills. So you want always want to make sure that you have money in your reserve to pay your bills. But then also, you might want to save up for something, right? You might want to save up for uh, to buy a new computer for your, your business, you know, to invest in some, some technology or whatever have you. So you would put, want to put money away for that as well. So I tell my clients that it is good to put away at least 15% of what you bring in in order to put it in your reserves. This spreadsheet is automatically going to set aside 15% of the money you bring in 
for your reserve allocation. So your net income is $2,400 and then you, your reserve allocation is $360. The rest of the money is yours. So I would recommend leaving the money in the business, but you could also take the money as a, a owner's draw or basically whatever you want. Let's go over here to the annual overview, see what this tab does. Okay, so our annual overview is going to give us a snapshot of our cash flow and a breakdown of our revenue and expenses. So right here, we see that our total revenue was $5,000, total expenses, $2,000, Total income before taxes, $3,000. Net income expense, $600. And so we have a net income of $2,400. So this profit percentage is going to let you know how much of the revenue that you're bringing in is actually profit. So about 48% of the revenue that we brought in this year was profit, right? That's pretty good. Now, when we look over here, this is going to show our cash flow throughout the year. So in January, we see that we brought in, we, we brought in a good amount and then we didn't, we didn't spend too much, you know, almost, almost have, but not quite. So we didn't spend too much. So when we put in more transactions, this will give you um, a better picture of your spending throughout the year. Now, this is going to give us a breakdown of our revenue. So this revenue breakdown is basically going to tell us what percentage of our revenue streams make up our revenue, right? So 100% of our revenue stream is, is consulting right now because we only have one transaction in. Same thing for our expense. 100% of our expenses are rent and, and lease. So let's go and add some more transactions to see what else it looks like. We're back and we added some more transactions. So you can add up to a thousand transactions with this spreadsheet and this spreadsheet is reusable. So if you want to use it for a different year, just go back to the PDF that you downloaded when you bought the spreadsheet, click the link to access the spreadsheet and you can use it for another year. I recommend using this a single spreadsheet for 12 for a 12 month period. What do I mean when I say that? So I started this at January 2022. So every transaction that I add in is only going to be for 2022. I'm going to cut it off at December 31st of 2022. When I want to start recording transactions for 2023, I'm going to get a new spreadsheet. You don't want to mix different years because if you mix different years, it's going to mess up your calculations on your profit and loss statement. And you're not going to have an accurate view of how much money you brought in in one year and how much money you spent in, in one year. So let's look at our profit and loss statement. So when we add our transactions, our profit and loss statement automatically calculates. Let me show you a feature that you would find really helpful. So let's look at our consulting. In January, we brought in $10,000 in consulting. So right here, we have a $5,000 consulting contract. But if we go down, let's look for consulting again. We have another consulting contract here, January 23rd. So the spreadsheet automatically adds those two together. And then here we have 10,000. So it does that throughout all of the transactions that you put. So you don't have to worry about adding that stuff up yourself. It's automatically going to calculate it for you. As you can see, the spreadsheet will give you your total revenue, 12 months, and then it will also give you your yearly total. And it does the same for your expenses. Let's take a look at the taxes. So for your taxes, you'll see, again, it's taking 20% of the money that you bring in. However, if we look right here, so in September, we actually had a loss. We had a loss of $1,188. So there's nothing here. The reason that is is because we, we don't pay taxes on a loss. So it's not going to take a a tax expense away when you have a loss. Same thing for the reserves. If you lost money, you can't put money away in your reserves. So your reserve is going to be zero. Same thing happened here. 
in November and again for the reserve in November. Now let's take a look at the annual overview. So if we look over here at and column C at our total revenue, we brought in $243,085.95, which is pretty good, right? Now we we spent a total of $133,169.62 in expenses which leaves us with a net income before taxes of $109,916.32. Now remember, we have to take out our taxes. Our spreadsheet automatically calculated an income tax expense of $22,230, which leaves us with a net income of $87,606.32. And 32 cents. So our net profit percentage is 63.7. Now this means that 63.7% uh, of the money that we brought into the business is profit, which is still pretty good. Now, if we look over here at our cash flow, we'll see the comparison of the amount of money we brought into the business versus the amount of money that left the business. You'll see that this pink, these pink bars over here will be your total revenue. And then these gray bars will be your total expenses. Now let's scroll down and look at the revenue breakdown. So again, this is going to tell you the percentage of each of your revenue streams that make up your total revenue. Now, if we look over here at our expenses, this gives you a good idea of how you are spending your money. Since we see that 12.6% of our money is going towards office expenses, we can now go over here in our transaction log and we can look and see what where we spent that money we can search office expenses and see which transactions were our office expenses to see why our office expenses were so high and we can adjust accordingly next year so that we're not spending as much money on office expenses that's it for this video if you want to get the spreadsheet i will leave the link to my etsy page in the description box below i hope you found this video helpful if you find yourself stuck with bookkeeping or tax questions, feel free to contact me. My information is in the description box below. See you next time.